So what is Bluetooth Low Energy good for? Um, well, connecting things. And when I mean things, I mean things that you don't normally think that you need to have connected. For example, why couldn't we put a sensor on every single chair in this room that just says whether somebody sat on the chair or not? They do it in cars, it's very simple. You know, there, there must be some very simple way of detecting that some body is sat on a seat. So why couldn't we have that? And then the conference organizers could find exactly who was in which seat or how many people were in each conference session, how many people turned up late, how many people left early, and then get some metrics based off that. It could be valuable. The hotel could sell conferences based on the fact that they can instrument how many people were sat in each individual session and make more money that way. So there's a market there for that sort of thing. You put it on your toothbrush. You know, let's put Bluetooth low energy in toothbrushes so that, you know, as you move, because, you know, we can generate enough energy from the movement of when you brush your teeth to power a low energy device to say that you brush your teeth and how long you brushed it for. That might be useful, especially if it's a kid's toothbrush. And you think, oh, yeah, you know, you know, Tommy, go and uh, brush your teeth. And he comes back two minutes later and says, I brush my teeth. And you go, yeah, now go and brush your teeth. I've got the data. It's going to revolutionize uh, parenting. <laughs> Just think. So, you know, the more traditional ones are watches. Uh, you know, Casio has some, uh, a great uh, watch out there that does remote display for phones so that when you get a text message or a Facebook message or a tweet or something like that, then it displays that on the watch. And this is the most valuable real estate that you have on your body. It's easiest to get to. That's why people wear watches there. In the good old days, they had watches on, on ropes that you had in your waistcoat pocket. We don't have those anymore. People who wear watches wear them on the wrist because that's valuable real estate. If we can put valuable information on that valuable real estate, you can make a lot of money there. We could tag objects, asset tagging, you know, things that people lose all the time. You know, every month that we get a number of emails around CSR, for example, who's stolen my oscilloscope? Why not just tag that oscilloscope, put a Bluetooth low energy device on there, have little sensors around the building that says, I know where that oscilloscope gone, has gone, they've nicked it. It's very simple. Or, you know, more critical, in a hospital. You know, hospitals have an awful lot of very, very expensive equipment which goes walking because some consultant wants to use that piece of equipment and they can't be bothered to talk to somebody else and say, oh, is it okay if I borrow that at the moment? So they just wander off with it and then don't tell anybody, just leave it in some random room. It would be so much better to be able to ask the piece of equipment, where are you? Health and fitness sensors. You know, we all need to do more exercise. So let's enable all of that. Body sensors, things like blood pressure, pulse rate, blood glucose, skin conductance, all sorts of things. But not only that, but think about all the other things around you, in your home and office automation, lights, light switches, temperature sensors, occupancy sensors, window sensors. All of these, because the, the transactional cost of a single transaction is so low, you can enable all of that with low energy without a problem. Low duty cycle machine to machine communication. So, you know, there are an awful lot of machines that need to be connected to other machines to make things happen. So just think in your home, you've probably got some thermostat that is probably wired to some heating or cooling or both system. But it's only one thermostat in one location in your house. In my house, it's in a cold hallway with no heating whatsoever. So Quite frankly, what we do is when we are cold, we close the door to that room. And when we're hot, we open the door to the room. That's not a sensible way of burning money. Sorry, fuel, which quite frankly nowadays is mostly money. So why don't we have a thermostat per room? Why don't we have a thermostat that's smart enough to know whether you're in the room or not? And more importantly, who is in the room? My wife likes it hotter than I do. Not, no surprise there, I'm sure. 
So why don't we have thermostats in rooms that know who is in that room and changes the temperature of that room accordingly? So that when my wife is working in her office, her office is lovely and toasty. And then when she leaves the office, the heating turns off or goes down to a, a level that it just ticks by so that when she comes back, she goes, oh, it's cold in here. And then five minutes later, oh, it's lovely and warm now. Why can't we build that? That's a smarter system. We can do all sorts of things. So communications within a system. So car wheel sensors, for example. You know, what's the air pressure in the car? Um, is the car tire burst? Other things in the car, though. You know, there are loads and loads of wires in cars. Wires are heavy. The heavier the car is, the more fuel consumption it will use, and therefore the less likely you are to sell that car. In Europe, you don't sell cars about on how fast they go or on what features they have apart from Bluetooth, it appears. You sell cars based on what the fuel consumption is. Because when fuel is, you know, $9 a gallon, which to Americans, they're going, oh my God, that's really expensive. It's like, yeah, but we have really efficient cars. So by reducing the cost of the wires in the car, we can improve things. So why can't we do things like put wireless sensors on the car boot or the, the trunk of the car to say whether it's open or closed instead of having a wire? It's not life critical, it's not safety critical, it's just, hey, I want to display a thing that says you haven't closed the back of your car properly. We can do that with low energy, so why don't we do it? Of course, anything that has data that you want to transmit to somewhere else can use low energy. Streetlights, roads, bicycles, anything. Just think of anything that could have data that could be useful to somebody. Remember, you don't need to have power, don't need to have a battery. If you can get enough battery, if you can get enough energy from a solar power or vibration or some other scavenge energy, then you can run that forever. Of course, the, the one I really like is a solar powered light switch that when it runs out of charge in the capacitor that you're probably going to charge from the solar panel, uh, it turns the light on to recharge the capacitor and then turns it off when the capacitor is back full again. Uh, which means that randomly lights will turn on throughout a whole city because the, the light switches themselves need energy. Anyway, moving on.